After running benchmarks for Ubuntu, RPM, and Arch-based distributions, let's revisit NixOS and see how good it is for gaming when compared to the others. Unlike my previous videos, I won't be setting up everything from the ground up because after making the last NixOS video, I saved the configuration file. I also didn't download the latest ISO file and continue using the version 22.11 installer. If you want to see how easy it is to set up NixOS for gaming on an NVIDIA AMD dual GPU gaming laptop, check out this video. During the installation, I didn't find the place to inject my existing configuration file. But I don't think this is a big deal because the system can boot into the desktop properly after. Then I grabbed my old configuration, added auto update setting inside, put it in the etc folder, then rebuilt with the update option. It reboot the system automatically after that. Then I can see the NVIDIA driver, but the Nix OS channel is still 22.11. I use these two commands to update the channel. I also need to issue an update channel command before the system can be upgraded. With everything up to date, now the issue is Steam and Bottles were installed as flat packs last time, so they were not part of the configuration file. This time, I put them into the file along with MangoHut as the user native application. This is the third time I'm installing NixOS. The past two times, I tried setting it up from scratch, and I had issues with usability and easiness of installation. But I have to say, this time though, the installation and setup were effortless with the old configuration. Another side note before we go ahead is, Valve released version 8 of Proton right before I started making the video. And I was using experimental version on all the other distributions. So to make the results more comparable, I decided to use Proton 8 instead of the experimental version on NixOS. With everything working, let's run the benchmarks. Starting with GNOME. In Red Dead Redemption 2, I got 27.3 as the 0.1% low, 36.4 1% low and 64.9 average. Assassin's Creed Origins gave me 26.1, 0.1% low, 42.6, 1% low, and 70.3 average. Switching to Plasma, I saw 28.8, 0.1% low, 36.3, 1% low, and 60.3 average on Red Dead Redemption 2, 31, 0.1% low, 46.8 1% low, and 69.8 average on Assassin's Creed Origins. In Cinnamon, with Red Dead Redemption 2, I was getting 26.9 as 0.1% low, 37.6 as 1% low, and 52.2 as the average. On Assassin's Creed Origins, I got 22.5 0.1% low, 41.4 1% low and 70.3 average. Next one is XFCE. I was getting 24.7 0.1% low, 36.8 1% low, and 53.4 average on Red Dead Redemption 2, 25.3 0.1% low, 43.5 1% low, and 69.8 average on Assassin's Creed. Finally, I switched over to Pantheon. And Red Dead Redemption 2 gave me 27, 0.1% low, 37.5, 1% low, and 55.33 average. Assassin's Creed gave me 28.3, 0.1% low, 48.5, 1% low, and 78.4 average. But looking at the data from Assassin's Creed, Pantheon has better average FPS and 1% low. But Plasma is taking the crown when combining 0.1% and 1% low. Same story is true over Red Dead Redemption 2. Pantheon has the best average and 1% low numbers across the board. Even though Plasma's average number is a bit mediocre, 
it still has the best 0.1% load compared to the other desktop environments. Which means if you want to use X11, you can go with Pantheon. And if you want Wayland, go with Plasma. They should perform very similar. As for the other three desktop environments, I'll put GNOME on third because it has taken the second place in Red Dead Redemption 2 and fourth place on Assassin's Creed Origins for overall FPS results. While Cinnamon and XFCE were performing equally due to both of them took third place in one game and fifth in another. With the best desktop figure out, let's try comparing the benchmarks with other distributions. Previously, I made three separate videos to see what is the best distribution for gamers on Ubuntu, RPM, and Arch-based systems, respectively. So let's see how Nix OS fit into the picture. I'm taking the best performers from each category, which are Fedora, Nobara, Manjaro, Pop OS for Assassin's Creed, and Ubuntu for RDR2. First, let's take a look at the data from Assassin's Creed Origins. It seems NixOS takes the crown easily, with Manjaro on third when using 1% low and average, and Nobada on third when using 0.1% and 1% low numbers. Next is Red Dead Redemption 2. We can see Fedora is after Pantheon and Gnome when comparing the average number but it is behind Plasma when using 0.1 and 1% low numbers. Novala number is still comparable even though none of its benchmark numbers pass any desktop environments on NixOS. And Manjaro and Ubuntu are trailing behind quite badly when compared to others. This means when it comes to gaming, it is worth it to try an immutable system like NixOS. RPM and Arch-based systems are still worth trying since they are still somewhat on par with NixOS. But Ubuntu-based systems are quite bad in both of the games. Another take on this is that native app may not outperform Flatpaks. Because in Manjaro and NixOS, I was using native Steam, Bottles, and Mango Hut, but Flatpaks on all the RPM and Ubuntu-based systems. And even though Manjaro took third place in Assassin's Creed, it performs pretty bad on Red Dead Redemption 2. And before we end this video, I also want to mention that please don't take my data as a 100% trustful source, given that I am using a thin and light gaming laptop on which the performance can be affected by the heat greatly. To migrate this issue, I always start a benchmark after the laptop is idle and fan is calm for at least 5 minutes. But there still might be discrepancy in this data. And compared to other big YouTube channels, my data is only run on two games. They will be more accurate if I have the time to run 15 to 20 games like Gamers Nexus or Hardware Unbox. It's just I don't have the time nor the effort to set up for different games on different distributions every time I'm making a video. Different setup on distributions are enough for me to go through each time. Different gaming setup from ProtonDB will only multiply the complexity for me. And the final factor that the data may have noise is the Proton version and the runners on bottles. After finding out Soda can be used to run RDR2 on X11 desktop in bottles, I was using that for all the desktop environments in NixOS to save time. But Proton GE was used across the other three videos. As for the Assassin's Creed Origin, I have no way to revert the experimental version on Steam to the stage before Valve released version 8. So NixOS performed better than the other distributions may also do to awesome job Valve shipped to Proton 8. And that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next time. Bye.